Oh, shall we pray, Heavenly Father? We are here gathering together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. In the first day of the week, when you completed our salvation through your resurrection from the dead, the third day. And uh, so, we're gathering together to glorify your name, to worship your name, Lord, until you come. Thank you, Father. Open, please open heaven and give us anointment of peace and grace so that we may be able to see the, your glory in the Holy Spirit, which presented in the midst of us. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All of you, welcome to worship service. Before we are summoned, yeah, let me read a book of Psalm chapter 23. It's a very famous psalm, the sang by King David, okay? Let me read it for you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. When Jesus come, when he take us home in heaven, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. That is called New Jerusalem. All right. Okay. Today's main passage, main scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. For seven through ten. Actually, let me read from verse one, okay? Now, you'd better here read, you know, from verse one, verse one through verse ten. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come the visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which he, he, it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he sees me to be, or that he hears of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of a Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord tries that I might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly 
Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Yeah, I think, you know, this word, this testimony made by Apostle Paul uh, may not be able to be understood by you because you are not that old, you are still, you know, young age, that's why it's a matter of time before you go and experience uh, this kind of troubles, kind of storm. You know, that is called, you know, the messenger of Satan. Apostle Paul had a kind of um, uh, thorn, just like a disease, you know. He had, you know, a problem, in, you know, eyesight. Yes. So, he has so weakness in his eyes. And um, he also experienced many kinds of, you know, weaknesses. As we read, King David testifies, um, though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he will fear no evil. Of the reason he confessed, the Lord God is with him. He also testified his rod and staff comforts him even when he is wandering away from the Lord. What that means, a rod and staff. Staff, right? Upside is kind of kind of look like a hook, right? And um, the bottom is just like a rod. That means, you know, even though sometimes he's just away from the Lord's presence, you know, then um, God used to just hook him, you know, to take him to his presence. And also, sometimes he, you know, God chastened him with a rod, okay? Rod, right? And he's talking about that. So, when he is wandering away from the Lord, you know, the, the, uh, the staff and rod of God just taking care of him. Yeah, we are living in a sinful body. Even though we are saved, our body is so simple. And we also walk according to the flesh away from the Holy Ghost so often. Apostle Paul wrote unto the saints of Galatians to encourage them. He said that, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Yes. Our soul has been saved through believing Jesus Christ, his death and burial and his resurrection. But uh, even though our spirit is born again to the Holy Spirit, still we are living in simple body. We have to make a choice whether follow the lust of the flesh or follow the Holy Spirit. How we follow the Holy Spirit? The way to follow the Holy Spirit is to follow the obey and the words of God, you know, that was that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. All men are born in Adam, without any exception tend to follow the thought of the flesh because of a sinful body. Unless they follow his, the Holy Ghost, there is no exception of man at all in the world. King David became the king of Israel after King Saul died. He began to have a comfortable life since then without any threatening from King Saul. You know, that's why he just said, when he passed through in the valley of darkness of death, right? Not feared, because he knew God was with him. Finally, 
He failed to overcome the lust of the flesh in his comfortable life and ended up committing adultery with the wife of, his, of Uriah, one of his subordinates, one of his general under him, and even murdered him after all, abandoning him in the severe warfare. In the main passage, Apostle Paul testifies, he besought the Lord three times, asked the Lord three times, that a thorn in his in our flesh, the messenger of Satan in the midst of pain. He asked, Lord, oh, would you be free from a thorn in my body? Three times he that. But God answered him back, saying, my grace is sufficient for thee. That means what? My grace is good. As good, is good one, even though you are troubled with, you know, the thorn in your body. That means I are allowed all those things stay in you. Finally, he understood the reason was, you know, that it should be exalted above measure. Though the abundance, through the, uh, through the abundance of the revelation, there was a thorn in his flesh. And God spoke to him because he received a lot of abundant revelation of God. That's why, you know, God allowed a thorn in his flesh so that he may not be arrogant because of his you know, spiritual knowledge, spiritual revelations. God took out his soul out of his body, and he was cut out into paradise that is in third heaven. And he heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. He experienced the day of Christ. That means he is experienced the day of a rapture in advance. Exact as the Lord Jesus showed his disciples, Peter, John, James, his glory to be with Elijah and Moses in his millennial kingdom in the future, in the spirit. The Lord Jesus showed Apostle Paul of the glory that is given to him in the day of Christ when Jesus appeared in the air to take us home. But he was not allowed to utter, say, speak unto anyone whatever he saw and heard in heaven. The kingdom of God coming in the future is fulfilled within the children of God born of the Holy Ghost. Their spirit is already sitting at the right hand of God with the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Lord gave a thorn in the body of Apostle Paul, he is giving different kinds of thorns in the body of the children of God. For someone, the thorn of disease. For some other, the thorn related to their children in various ways. For some, the thorn of reproaches and or persecution or necessities or distresses and so on. It's different from man to man. The Apostle Paul understood that the strength of the Lord is made perfect in the weakness through the word of the Lord in his prayer. Carnal men are seeking to make their thorns within them to be taken out. God the Father allows such a thorn in the children of God lest they should be exalted. In this moment, let us think about the thorns given by the Lord unto each one of us. It may be the time of blessing for us to understand the will of God unto us. Now, think about that. What kind of thorn you have? What kind, what kind of problem you have? What kind of things, you know, you pray to the Lord, oh Lord, take away these kind of things, help me, bless me, is any kind of things. But Jesus said, even when sparrow, sparrow never fall down, alas, he allow to be done.
That means all our situation, everybody, the children of God, has been allowed by God. That's why still he's saying unto us, surrender all we have and give thanks to him because the grace of God unto us is sufficient, all of us, without any exception. Apostle Paul understand of a thorn as the grace of God, not the thorn itself, and he testified. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Almost the Christians think, you know, wrongly, right? When I'm okay, I'm healthy, everything going well, then I have the power of Jesus Christ so that I can do anything. No, it's not a spiritual thing. When our flesh is weak, when we are weak, it is time to receive the power of Christ so that Jesus Christ may use us in his own way. He made a great testimony and said again, therefore I take pleasure in informities, in reproaches, if reproach means, you know, kind of insultation, insult, somebody insult him, right? In necessity, necessity means kind of poverty. In persecution, somebody persecuted him. In distresses, so many things, you know, press upon him. Eh? Distresses. Many Christians suffering from distresses these days. But he rejoiced of all four kinds of things, weakness, you know, for Christ's sake. But when he said, when I am weak, then am I strong. Yeah, when we are weak, then we can be strong in the Lord. But carnal man and woman, carnal Christians think, you know, different way. He understood the strength of the Lord walking in the midst of his weakness in his flesh. Since then, he never asked the Lord to eliminate all kinds of thorns besides the thorn, the messenger of Satan in his flesh. Rather be glory in his weakness for the sake of Christ. He rejoiced for his weakness for the sake of Christ. What meaning for the sake of Christ? Today, it may be the opportunity for us to understand the spiritual mystery that Apostle Paul understood. But there is no way to understand this truth for them that have no the Spirit of Christ. That means unless we are born again of the Holy Spirit. But whosoever has the Spirit of Christ is able to understand through asking the Spirit of understanding unto the Lord at this moment. For most of the baby Christians, their prayers are full of asking to eliminate their thorns, their problems. They try to solve the problem. But what we have asking to eliminate their, we have, uh, we have to know is that God wants to make us to trust in him through all kinds of troubles that are thorns and to overcome those by faith. Yeah, our Lord is asking us to overcome the throne, overcome the trouble, not eliminate those. But there is a few, scarcely, hardly, that understand such a spiritual mystery. Jesus Christ spoke towards them that followed him clearly. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Yeah, I think in his word, Jesus related to the confession of Apostle Paul. Think very, very carefully, deeply, okay? Before this service, you know, pass by. Then what is the cross? We are able to get to know it through the cross that was taken up by Jesus Christ. What kind of cross Jesus Christ took, took up? 
he dies for us. He died for us when we were sinners for our sins on the cross. Yeah. The cross is to bear the sins of others. Somebody, you know, curse us, somebody insult us, somebody persecute us, somebody, you know, put us in distress. Yes, that is the cross. To bear the sins of others. In other words, if the cross is a kind of mistreatment of victimizing without any fault for himself. Even though we, we have no fault, we never fault. Are we mistreated, victimized by somebody else? That's the cross. In other words, it is infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecutions, and distresses for the sake of Christ. Apostle Paul understood five kinds of thorns unto him are worthy to the eyes of Christ for the sake of him. He might understood of five kinds of thorns in him are to be exchanged with the five different crowns in the day of Christ. He testified with such a great truth unto the Roman Christians under severe persecution by the Roman Empire. And if children, the heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes, five different kinds of cross related to five different kinds of, of kind of crown. No cross, no crown. Apostle Paul understood of the glory to given unto him in the day of Christ and in the kingdom of Christ that is called thousand years millennium kingdom when he come back he established it in the earth he also testified unto the saints and Thessalonians that was following Christ with him rejoicing of their thoughts victoriously of the will of God in Christ Jesus The reason Apostle Paul rejoiced all those things, all kind of crosses for the sake of Christ is because all those things happened to him to follow Jesus Christ. That's why it is a cross. That's why he rejoiced. He was, he was able to rejoice over five different kinds of cross expecting crowns when he meet the Lord in the air day of resurrection yes all those things prepared for us if we are able to take up our cross but you know Saint in Thessalonian church exactly followed Apostle Paul spiritually and so he encouraged, you know, the church of Thessalonians, saying, Rejoice evermore. Evermore means, you know, whatever thing happened. Rejoice more in the more miserable situation for the sake of Christ. Rejoice evermore in bearing more crosses. That means, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. Still Holy Spirit, you know, speaking to us today. The grace of God unto you is sufficient as you are. Don't forget that. When you're Getting older and older, you will experience this kind of cross, this kind of difficulties, infirmities, reproaches, necessities, and distress kind of things. More or less, remember this message, okay? 
Only what we can say is praise the Lord. Thank you. Because I believe your grace is for efficient to me. Because you allowed all this kind of situation for your sake, for your glory, to give us, to give me reward when you meet us in the air. You know, in the future, Holy Spirit will remind you of this message, okay? Yes. Even though you don't understand exactly 100% now, you shall understand gradually, okay? Even me, in elementary school, I studied the Bible. Still, those words of God reminded me. Even book of Daniel, I learned in my elementary school days. Still, I remember that message. And still, I remember the name of the teacher in the church. God may bless all of you to understand the grace of the Lord always is sufficient to you. Whatever things happen to your life, good or bad. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us message, Lord. Remind all of us whenever we have to be reminded, Lord, so that we may not fear, we may not complain, but we may be able to give thanks always and also pray without ceasing and rejoice evermore. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.